condor of the south and the eagle of the north will fly together in freedom. To live in balance with one another and with the earth, great goddess mother of all the living, embracing and nourishing all her children. serpent of the Amazon forest, the wise turtle of the California desert, will share their ancient secrets again. With humans humble enough to want to learn. With humans humble enough to want to learn. Divine of the soul. Divine of the spirits. I got kind of scared because I didn't know, I felt very empty and, and I didn't know. Um... A lot of fear comes up and because it's such a sort of mysterious and unknown experience that you know is going to be intense and trying. It really necessitates showing up. This path of working with this medicine isn't an easy path, and I'd say that it's a, it requires commitment and it requires tenacity and bravery. It kind of opened up this well of emotion and guilt and anger. I wasn't willing to let go of what I needed to let go of without a fight. So I suffered and so much pain. And... Nuestra identidad como nativos is que somos hijos de plantas sagradas que venimos trabajando en favor de la humanidad. The ancients realized that there were signs of nature in everything if we just had the eyes to see. A carrot looks like the human eye. It has a pupil with an iris and radiating lines, bell pepper, four chambers, red, in the shape of the heart. Now we know this is one of the best heart foods that you can possibly eat, an avocado. It's in the shape of the womb and the cervix of the female. It has one swollen seed in there, just like a woman who is pregnant. We now know that it prevents cervical cancers, distension of the womb, prolapse of the uterus. It takes just about nine months to grow an avocado from blossom to ripen fruit. This is one of the most profound. The ayahuasca, it expresses itself in a spiral upward. And I think it's more profound than what most of us would dare to imagine. When I told people in the early 90s that I was going to Brazil to conduct a uh, biomedical psychiatric study of ayahuasca, they would say, ayahuasca? I was one of the people that stumbled into researching these uh, substances with Tim Leary and Richard Alpert in the 60s at Harvard. And uh, we didn't know anything. We didn't know anything about them. We were just working with this idea of consciousness expanding, exploring their potentials. And then after a while, after a few years of stumbling around, uh, then we found out that, in fact, that there are shamanic traditions and traditional cultures all over the world where such plants have been used for many, many, many centuries for the purposes of healing. Ayahuasca is a decoction of two plants, Psychotria viridis, which contains dimethyltryptamine, or DMT, and there's Banisteriopsis copy, which contains the harmala alkaloids, harmine, harmaline, and tetrahydroharmine. It's a very intriguing phenomena that here you have these two plants which grow uh, in the Amazon forest. How did the native peoples come to determine that if you take plant A and plant B, an extraordinary phenomena can occur to the person who ingests the brew, whereas if you take each alone, nothing happens. What if there's a way to prepare your body and using certain sacred plants to move you into what most people would call a euphoric cosmic experience of time and space within yourself and connecting? Let thy foods be thy medicine. Let thy medicine be thy foods. La medicina trae la esencia de la madre, de la selva, de las plantas, de los elementos. Ya hay una conexión propia de la naturaleza en la medicina. Entonces, 
El papel de la medicina es abrir la conciencia. This medicine somehow allows you to dive deep in inside your own mind and inside your heart, your feelings. It has uh, an ancient memory. Plantita de Alelí, que parecida es nuestra vida. It seemed to me that these things were like deep, deep inside of me. You know, that the medicine seemed to kind of get out. You know, I, I knew it had to come out. I wanted it to come out. I'd asked for that in the ceremony. I'd asked for the Mother Earth to help me heal. You ask a question you are of your own inner self, your own inner wisdom self, your, your own intuition, you might say, and then you, you channel the answer, so to speak, and then you apply it, of course. You have to integrate it, otherwise it's just a fantasy. I've been able to reevaluate so many of my experiences and turn them into empowering experiences and lessons rather than just feeling like they were things that happened to me that hurt me. We subjected a, a battery of neuropsychological tests and really to determine if the ayahuasca was causing any uh, neurotoxicity, was causing any impairment in cognition, in capacity to think and plan and memorize and pay attention. What we found, again, to our surprise, was that not only was there no evidence of damage, but on certain subtests, they scored to a statistically significant level higher better than the non-ayahuasca using controls. A lot of people have lots of misconceptions. In our communities, children drink this medicine since they are two, three months old. And so this is a very safe medicine, especially when it is uh, used by an elder, by a person that has been trained well. They do the curing actually through sound. They start singing a song and uh, the, the song has a certain kind of rhythmic quality to it. It's like... <laughs> rhythmic drumming or rattling uh, provides a kind of a beat that allows a person to track and diagnose. So ayahuasca is used for diagnosis and for guidance. We started working toward bringing these medicines out of the forest, out of the jungle, into the communities that needed healing. When shamans do a shamanic journey with drumming or with plants, it's for the purposes of healing. It's not just for fun. It's often not fun. It can often be quite painful and difficult and involve challenges like intensive psychotherapy, working through difficult, you know, scary kind of things. And, but it does involve working with the spirits of the natural world. I was feeling scared of having it all break down, everything. <laughs> Which is a good thing. <laughs> but I think in my childhood, it was so out, everything was so out of control. And that, it was not a scary, safe place to be, and I've learned to work with that, and then it's kind of like, like maybe exposing that a little bit and opening up to it and, and truly healing it. It's what I needed to feel. It's what I needed to feel. I feel like, in a lot of ways, the process of life creates a lot of fragmentation. You know, lots of different episodes get, get left behind, you know, undealt with, un, unloved and forgotten. And I think that these medicines have really enabled me to gather some of those parts of myself back together. I think that everybody needs to experience ancient wisdom, just to come together as one, to, because I think the separation brings such fear and such anxiety, you know, and... I feel we're just, that's what we're living right now, is just this fear. The medicine can take you to some incredible places. It can give you really strong visions. It can show you things that you weren't expecting. It can show you things that you weren't prepared for. But I feel like the design of the ceremony really enables the integration. This is the most sacred experience I've ever had in my life in terms of the, the ritual of moment to moment and thought to thought. And everything you do has a purpose. Hey, 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 hey,
So these medicine, as our elders have told us, they unlock certain processes within you that allow you to, to become more aware in a very short time about the situation that we are in right now in this moment, which is very critical. Even though you don't have control and aren't making everything perfect around you, you're still loved. It still welcomes you into her womb and holds you, you know? It's like a mother's love. It embodies the spirit of the grandmother because it's a teacher and it's very gentle with the soul of people. It has a, a nurturing aspect to it. I think she shows us love in all ways. I feel love for a part of myself that I've never been able to love or accept before. What I try to relate to people that are skeptical about this medicine is that it really teaches you the importance of, of connection and how loving of an experience that is. It is time to unite the minds and the hearts toward a good rite of passage of the earth. Gracias a los árboles que nos acompañan, gracias a la tierra que nos permitió sentar y que este mensaje llegue hasta los confines de la tierra. The word is, is slowly seeping out. It's gradually infiltrating its way into mainstream culture, and I do think it will have a sizable impact on how our culture evolves. People all over the world are trying to wake up. That's one of the reasons why I think there's an increase of interest in spiritual practices of all kinds. And elevating or raising or expanding consciousness, I think, is the the key concept that I like to work with also in terms of these substances because when you raise consciousness, you expand consciousness, you increase freedom of choice. I believe that when more people become more open to their feelings and how they really feel about things and, and working to be stronger people, that collectively we can do more to help the planet. What healing for human beings to be able to come and witness this, you know. What healing for people to just to know that this exists. Help us, Grandpa. Grandma, to be okay in these times of change. Bless us. Ya llegó el día, llegó el amanecer. Ya reconocemos de que todos somos uno. The fact that ayahuasca is suddenly emerging at a time of critical environmental ecologic crisis, perhaps it's no accident. Perhaps this is a phenomena of nature designed to grab our attention, shake us up. And really direct our actions to survival of our species and all the species on this earth.